Hey, I'm E.B. Moss, head of content strategy at Media Village, and I'm walking down the aisle with three women here today for episode 37 of Insider Insights. So say hello to Tori Reese. Hello. Tori is the executive producer and showrunner, which we'll explain in a minute, of I Do to the Venue. That shall also be explained in a minute. We have Amanda Getz, who is VP of Marketing for The Not Worldwide. Hey. Yay. <laughs> and Nicole Vellucci, who is my favorite store's VP of Shopping Services. She's at Bloomingdale's. Hi. Hello. I'm going to get some shopping services from you, I think, Nicole. Definitely. Okay, Happy good. Happy to help. Good. <laughs> now I know people in high places. So our topic today is really fun. We're talking about a brand new show that is premiering right now. This is the week of July 15th. This will probably publish a little bit later. So by the time everybody hears this podcast, they better be watching I Do to the Venue, right? So that's coming up. And what network is it? FYI Network. On FYI, which is owned by A&E, A&E Networks. That's great. Okay. One of our Media Village member companies. So we love that. Tori, you you built this baby, so we're going to try to uh, really understand how you developed this concept and what it means to brands like The Knot and Bloomingdale's. Well, you guys are happy to be a part of this, I bet. Absolutely. Thrilled. Yeah. Cool. All right, so let's get some insights. Ready for some insights from those inside the media, marketing, and advertising industry? Welcome to Insider Insights from Media Village. That's your home for content from digital experts and ad tech providers to CMOs and CROs. I'm E.B. Moss, Managing Editor of Media Village. Let's get some insights. So we're here talking about I do to the venue. And I do want to know what the heck is I do to the venue. So I'm going to toss to the woman who basically pulled it together. You, Victoria Reese Tory, are executive producer and showrunner of this show. So you've been doing this for like a decade, and we'll talk about our backgrounds, our, our common ground in a second. But let's tell everybody what I do to the venue is and why it's different from any other show out there right now. Sure. I Do To The Venue is a brand new television show premiering July 18th at 8 p.m. on FYI Network. <laughs> Good plug. <laughs> Full plug. It's so funny you mentioned it as a baby because I have felt like it's my second baby. I have a 50-month-old <laughs> at home, and I Do To The Venue has had a longer gestation period than that child. So <laughs> I came up with the show idea when I was helping my sister plan her wedding, and I was at the time working on a very popular hunting show, House Hunters International, and while I was watching my sister and her fiancé weigh the different venue options, it's like, oh my gosh, uh, I saw the decision scene before my very eyes happening. So I have a wonderful producing partner who's been incredibly encouraging of me, and I came to him with the idea. His name is Damon Gambudo, and he said, write it up, which is what he always says. And it follows a couple as they go on a wedding venue journey. You meet them, learn their love story, watch them as they tour three wedding venues and ultimately make a big decision where they're going to get married. The thing that makes this show different is that everyone's familiar with branded content. This show is different because we reached out to the brands first and got them involved in the story from Jump. Is that where these two women come in? Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Tell us about the new model. Okay. Damon then enlisted the help of Todd Berger and Andy Marks, who have long histories in branded content, and working with FYI Network, which is a network very receptive to brand-integrated content. And when Damon came to me and said, let's talk about working with brands, I was honestly very concerned. Right. What's this going to do to my creative process and 100%. all that kind of thing? Okay. 100%. As a storyteller, you always want to be telling the most authentic stories you can. I love working in lifestyle because you get to take things that are real to people, like food, buying your first home, making dinner, <laughs> looking at wedding venues, and mm -hmm. you get to turn them into entertainment. And the thought of incorporating brands made me feel like a I was, I was worried about that we were going to get stripped from our ability to tell the story authentically, completely differently. Oftentimes when you think of brand-integrated content, 
you think of being force-fed the brands. Mm -hmm. What we really aim to do, uh, and what I aim to do as the storyteller here, is make sure that the brands enhance the story and further the story. And by targeting brands that make sense in this wedding space— And by including them in the storytelling process from the very beginning, we were actually able to create brands that became intrinsic to the story rather than additional or force-fed. So, Amanda, tell me what happened when you heard about this show called I Do to the Venue and somebody knocked on your door and said, yeah, have we got a show for you? Yeah. What happened? (laughs) Well, we heard from Tori, Any Day Collective, and we, we first heard about the concept of the show. We were like, This makes so much sense for us because this is what we do on a day-to-day basis. At The Knot, we're constantly helping couples make these big decisions. And so it is that organic representation of a brand that can still tell that story and be authentic to the couples and what their needs are. So it was an opportunity for us as a marketer. Every day I'm thinking about millennials, Gen Zers, they can call out an ad. They Mm -hmm. know when you're trying to advertise to them, right? So this was a really authentic way for us to talk about things like our app or even our executive editor, Lauren Kay, being the host of the show. Yeah, that's that is, cool. Exactly. That's something that she does on a day-to-day basis. She's constantly writing content for our app, for our site, helping couples make these decisions. So it was a really authentic way for us to promote some things that we are trying to promote, but kind of stay true to that storytelling element that Tori was talking about. So— uh, I don't understand. So they came to you and they said, we have this show. What did they want the knot? And then I'll ask Nicole, what did they want Bloomingdale's to do? What's the offer and what's your opportunity? Well, with the knot, it's really interesting because we are the leading go-to wedding planning resource across the globe now with our merger with with Wedding Wire. And so it's, it was an real in-kind partnership, really, because we gave access to over, you know, a million couples for casting. We helped find Maria and Trey. We have access to all of these venues. We know the ins and outs of the venues. And then with our expertise in Lauren Kay as the host of the show, really helping to make sure that we're steering these couples and helping to make sure that they can make the decisions, they have all the information they need. So So basically, Tori, you had this idea for a show and you need you were having trouble you were birthing this baby and you were trying to get the show made and Andy and the other folks came up with this idea let's pull in partners to facilitate the production of this show so one was the knot and then Nicole the other was Bloomingdale's mm-hmm. so how did they pitch you what they how did they position it better than i did right now <laughs> what they say it's funny. I think Amanda summed it up really well. You know, we're, we're looking for a way to reach couples in a natural and authentic way without feeling like we're buying up ad space. And here comes Andy pitching this show. Mm-hmm. And at first we thought, well, hold on, we're not TV producers. So I don't, I don't even know that we can pull this together. And as we went through the material and we got to know the team, I think that really did it for us. Seeing the passion come through and seeing the story come to life in the way they explained it, all of a sudden we started seeing, just like Tori started seeing the decision scene at her kitchen table, we started seeing, well, what better way to get to know a couple than registering with them. And, and the Bloomingdale's registry, of course, that's a big thing. Oh, it's it's it, it ended up playing out perfectly. So we got to meet uh, Maria and Trey, and they came into the store, and our consultants got to ask them really personal questions, get to know a little bit about their life together, their lifestyle, what they would be looking for in building a home, all necessary information for – our other partners, and for the TV show to come to life, and a way to exemplify how much Bloomingdale's is there at your important moments in your life, too. Okay, so I think I've got all the pieces now. You have a brainstorm at the kitchen table. You help create this show concept as the Mm showrunner. You have your partners all set. The knot helps even identify one of the couples because, you know, you're the go-to place on all things. And shout out to 
Emmy and Nathan, who registered on the knot for their wedding, and I RSVP'd through the whole thing, and I'll be going there August 4th. I'm just saying. Amazing. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and then we pulled in Bloomingdale's for Aspects, and Maria and Trey are the featured couple in the premiere episode mm-hmm. who were following their journey mm-hmm. through finding the perfect venue, which you know from your sister is really hard to do. Yes. And for myself, Got it. too. Yes. Okay. And I have to say that when you think about branded content, and my experience with branded content, it, it doesn't work that way, right? It's normally you have your storyline figured out, set yes. up, and then I don't, I don't have a in-depth understanding of how TV is sold, but basically there's ad sales and and um, sometimes they say you're doing an integration and you have your storyline and you have to kind of shoehorn this mm-hmm. brand That's into right. the story. Yep. Mm-hmm. Here, it was completely the opposite of that. We were able to say we want to do the show. We approached The Knot. The Knot help, helped us cast. I mean, the access that we had to couples, we were able to specify by region. We were able to specify by date. We were able to, yep. I mean, the the help of finding such an amazing couple. And Marie and Trey are adorable and lovable. And I hope you all watch them. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that access was, was incredibly valuable. Also, when you make television, you kind of have to strip real-life situations of brands because oftentimes there's competing brands or you're not allowed to show trademarks on television and there are all these rules. Mm. So in my producing experience, I've been in situations where I've wanted to shop in a location as gorgeous as the Bloomingdale's 59th Street flagship registry mm-hmm. and been unable to show it, right? I've been able to unable to, not able to show the, the logos, not able to show mm-hmm. the brands. I get to, it, with this new model, put my couple, my characters, in a place that makes sense. A real life setting. Mm-hmm. A real life setting. Mm-hmm. And the authenticity of that, yeah. I think, will be tangible to, mm-hmm. to audiences. Because as Amanda says, millennials can sniff it out. Yeah. <laughs> and they, <laughs> they can see tell. it coming. They yep. can Hashtag tell. ad. <laughs> yes, 100%. So the beauty of this model is that we get to embrace the real role that brands play in our everyday life. Mm-hmm. When you register for a stand mixer, we have to stay. St- we have to say stand mixer in television. Mm-hmm. But what does everyone call it in the real life? They call it a KitchenAid, yeah, right? right? With this new model, we were able to be at the Bloomingdale's flagship registry. We were able to actually register for products. We were able to go on the Not website, which are things that actual real-life couples engage with on a daily basis yes. when they are planning their wedding and tell a very true Story. So the integrations for this new brand funded model is intrinsic to the story rather Perfect. than feeling like it's forced. Now, this might be a question that you can't answer, or maybe you can. Nicole, in the example of, you know, let's call a, a mixing stand a KitchenAid. Were you able to also solicit support from KitchenAid as Bloomingdale's? We do have a brand partner. We actually ended up working with Lennox Mm -hmm. and, again, selected a brand that was very natural to our couple, Maria Mm -hmm. and Trey. They loved the product when they saw it on the floor. There's a really fun spot in the TV show that just Lennox had the perfect product for. I I did see that, and I I do (laughs) want that product, by the way. (laughs) And their enthusiasm was uh, genuine. Oh, it was genuine, and it was fun, and it was exciting. And I think just as we keep saying, it was real. So we did take a brand partner, but it was a brand partner that made sense. Mm -hmm. And it was a brand partner that fit the lifestyle of the couple. And then I think the real icing on the cake is Bloomingdale's and The Knot have worked together in the wedding industry space. And so it just all felt like a A big big happy uh, family. And and I would also like to say (laughs) perfect marriage and the gift that keeps on giving. Yes. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. And and so Amanda, you also, as you mentioned, Lauren is the host and and she is your executive editor. Yep. Right. And she does a great job as a host and she's fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so she's terrific. That's great. I mean, talk about, you know, being embedded in in a show. Let's talk about you guys personally, because I find this kind of interesting. If you don't mind, <laughs> you have a less intuitive start to your career, Amanda. You uh, you came from the financial side yeah. of things, right? Yeah. What was, what was your 
journey to this place? Um, it, it's an interesting one. I feel like I've had a couple of different lives. Yeah, I was in financial services in Chicago, transferred to New York, doing a little hedge fund marketing. Got a little burnt out. So oh, imagine, <laughs> imagine, <that>. yeah. <laughs> so I actually became a wedding planner for over six years. Wow, working for a celebrity wedding planner, traveling around the world, putting on some big events, and actually did a little stint in reality TV. So learned that side of the house, and then started managing his brand and licensing deals. So really got back into marketing towards the end of that. And saw a couple of opportunities in the wedding space that needed to be solved. So I actually went and did my own tech startup for a while. To learn the space and be better at it? Yeah, and to learn how to build a company and build a product. I was mm -hmm. really interested in the tech scene. It was back in 2012 when the tech scene in New York was really booming and starting. And mm -hmm. so... You know, did the accelerator thing, learned how to build, you know, manage a backlog and yep. work with product teams and all of that. And after about 18 months, I was pitching at a female pitch event, trying to raise capital. Mm -hmm. Didn't go so well. But Carly Roney, the founder of The Knot, was on the panel. And she brought me in the next day and asked if I wanted to come and lead go-to-market strategy at The Knot. And so I've been there now for five years, and I now lead all marketing for the not worldwide, yeah. Love Consumer them. side, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, Media Village has a village called Women Advancing. So great embodiment, I think, for everybody at this table. So it makes me particularly happy to have an all-female cast today. <laughs> and <it>. especially <laughs> someone like a, a woman in tech. Yay. We need more of that. Yes. And the interesting thing also is that, Nicole, this has been like, Bloomingdale's has been a career path for you. So you are really emblematic of climbing up that ladder. It's and I true. think you had a recent promotion too, right? I did. Uh, well, I'm in my current role about two years. This to is my that's recent. <laughs> <laughs> this is my 15th year at Bloomingdale's. Wow. Oh, my wow. God. Congrats. And it's been a wonderful career for me. I started as one of the cosmetics managers at our 59th Street flagship store. And I've had a number of store roles. It was a regional merchandise manager. I was the general manager in our Soho store. And two years ago, took over shopping services. Mm -hmm. And it's just been a dream come true. Oh, good. Wow. This is, you know, in a world where there's a lot of noise and a lot of clutter, services help differentiate us and they keep stores relevant and they tie the customer to what's happening online and how do you see it and experience it in store? Or how do you see it in a store and experience it online? And of all my services, the registry is just probably the most changed in the last few mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. but again, the most emotional business that we have because <laughs> we get to be a part of couples' biggest yeah. moments yeah. in their life, one of their biggest moments in their lives. So this job has been, it's allowed me to be entrepreneurial. It's allowed me to really meet the needs of a changing client base. Mm -hmm. um, it's fun. And so in today's environment, obviously, you said that we don't make TV, <laughs> and yet here you are now. You're in a television show thanks to the brains over here from Tori. <laughs> and so is this something that you anticipate doing more of? And I want to know how you're going to leverage this show in today's challenging retail environment and what other kinds of innovative content marketing you're doing. Um, you know, I, I think, Yes, our first venture, and so far it's been pretty, it felt pretty natural as we got to play a role in the development and the production, as we got to work with these wonderful partners. Hopefully everyone will watch this week and feel the same way we do about mm -hmm. this project. We'd love to do more because, again, the word authentic has come up several times we really felt like this was a way to insert ourselves in a really natural way. Mm -hmm. And for people that watch it to see Bloomingdale's register that we are a part of the wedding industry in a big, cool way mm -hmm. without it feeling forced. Mm -hmm. Right. And so yeah. we'd love to continue to do more projects like this. And then we've taken some of the content and we are going to post it on our site 
we've had Maria and Trey curate a sample registry. So if Mm. you go on to the registry website on Bloomingdales.com, you'll be able to click the banner and you'll be able to see some of the favorite items that they registered for. And you can add them to your registry or buy them yourself. Mm -hmm. That's where I get that Lennox. Yes, Yes. that is exactly where you Mm -hmm. get that Lennox. Okay. Great coupe champagne glass. Okay. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things, actually, about the, the this integration, too, is that people get to shop along and experience the the brands with mm-hmm. Marie and Trey, with mm-hmm. our characters. So it's just another way to touch audiences at home and reach yeah. out to them on the couch and make television a more interactive experience. Right, you know, sure. Which is so fun and just very cool. You know, always people would be like, oh, I can't wait until I could— buy Carrie Bradshaw's skirt. And it's like, well, now you can you can yeah, get the same plates. As, yeah. <laughs> you can get right. the same china pattern as Marie and Trey. I mean, that's very cool. So as a, a, I hate to qualify a showrunner as female, but, you know, there aren't enough, <laughs> just like women in tech. So tell us about your path to this place landing here, other than being at your sister's kitchen table and <laughs> concepting a show. I know that we have some common ground. We do. Both having worked on some uh, Food Network and HGTV shows back in the day, and you've always been on the production side. Yes. But tell me about your evolution and, and where you want to now take this kind of approach that you were resistant to and now you're embracing. Once the the gear started turning about the the potential for this type of integration and this type of partnership, it really feels like the the sky is the limit. If you if you watch television or if you watch any sort of any content out there and you see all of the different ways that brands are stripped and it ends up f- reminding you that you're watching something rather mm-hmm, than just feeling mm-hmm. immersed in it. When you say stripped, you mean stripped out or fuzzed over so that we can't see exactly. the brand. Exactly. Brands are blurred mm-hmm. or, you know, the example that I always that I always go back to is either the KitchenAid or, you know, if you watch any food type of, I do a lot of food competitions, so candy-coated chocolates rather than M&M's. Vanilla <laughs> chocolate sandwich cookies rather than Oreos, right? We've all seen it, and we live in a world where that's sort of the way brands work, and they they get removed. When you think about it, once I started thinking about it, I was like, oh, my God, this is the future, right? Like, when you have this many partners coming together in a way that just makes so much more sense than it has in the past, and you still get to tell I'm obviously most protective of the story. The most important thing to me is always, is this story going to feel authentic? And I feel like if you're watching the television show and you think, oh, that was paid for, then I have failed as a storyteller to the audiences, and I've also failed to the brands. And so I think that when you think about we all got together, it just started to make so much sense. You think this is just the beginning, right? That did not answer your question about me being a female showrunner, and I apologize about that. I'm on the edge of my seat, so you still have the mic. (laughs) Okay, thank you. Um, (laughs) Honestly, when I was first working in lifestyle television, I was working on a construction show, and I was the only female on set, both on the production side and the construction side. I've had wonderful mentors, both male and female, who have taken me under their wing and trusted trusted me with projects, with the creative, with the storytelling, and have brought me up. And— over the course of my career, I have seen more, right? Um, I've seen, I've been surrounded, there have been more women in the room, mm-hmm. which has been very exciting. I haven't been working in the industry forever, but <laughs> over the time I have been in it, I have seen growth and development. I think it's wonderful. I think we need more women. I know as a female showrunner, I took pride in hiring some women. I loved, I love it when I'm on set and I see women sound operators and when I see women directors of photography. We had a female sound up on our show, and I love that. I think that's mm-hmm. wonderful, and I think we need to do more of that. So I will give a shout-out, only because he's near and dear to both of our hearts, but as you were supplying shows to then Scripps, now part of Discovery, shows Michael Smith at Cooking, I think you mentioned, as mm-hmm. a good supporter, and I'm thrilled that Michael is a contributing journalist to Media Village. So shout out to Michael Smith. Yay. <laughs> Hi, Michael. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and Demi and Nathan, who are men- Oh, yes, I already said that they're getting married. <laughs> 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 so I want to go back to the knot now. And Amanda, with your experience in both tech and, and overseeing marketing, 
Can you talk a little bit about how you will follow the customer on this journey? I mean, we're following Maria and Trey, Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. but how do you follow your customers with a video product and appeal to them and bring them back in on their journey? That's a great question. So at the highest level, when we think about following our customers along their journey, 60% of couples know about the knot before they even get engaged. Similar to Bloomingdale's, it's probably a similar marketing opportunity, I will say, that it's, it's an older brand that might have established reputations in a millennial or Gen Z's mind. And so this was an awesome opportunity to kind of have this storytelling aspect around your brand that you can really make it feel realistic to what the brand is today like what the actual experience is and maybe overcome those mindsets. And so at the awareness level, I think that that's really important. And then as we bring this to digital and and, in the TV world, we think it's really important to follow them, obviously tracking them into the product experience. And then we do a ton of retargeting to make sure that we keep them going because wedding planning is a 12 to 14 month process Mm -hmm. that has ebbs and flows. I'm sure as you were helping your sister, you know that you make a lot of decisions and then you like breathe for a second and there's more (laughs) commerce opportunities than you breathe for a second. So we do a really great job of making sure that we have a lot of life cycle marketing, whether it's um, triggered emails, push notifications in the app based off of the behaviors we're seeing of the users. What content are they looking at? What actions are they taking down to? What checklist items they are checking off of their wedding checklist so that way we can tailor the mm. marketing messages to them. I mean, my like holy grail of marketing is how few of people will see a marketing message because it's so personalized to them right message, right user, right time, to me is the right thing. If you are sending a message to your entire user base, that is a horrible marketing message. So that's kind of how I feel. Good answer. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So now, Nicole, with Bloomingdale's, obviously the registry is something that can be done online, Mm -hmm. not just in store, although who wouldn't want to just walk through the aisles Mm. and pick stuff? Mm -hmm. Boy, I fantasize about that. (laughs) And, you know, competing with Amazon Prime Day aside, what kind of evolution have you seen in terms of Bloomingdale's marketing, both in the the digital and the IRL world? (laughs) (laughs) I think it's really similar to what Amanda just spoke Mm -hmm. about, too. It's Uh, The more we can hone in on, you know, as we have to target a couple of different things. So one, we want to create registrations. And so you have to be out there in the world finding people when they're ready to register. Good point. Um, Yeah. Which isn't (laughs) always easy to do. And we certainly don't know when some of our own customers have taken that next step or exactly when. And then are we hitting them at the right time? And then they've registered and now it's about what kind of content are we serving to them along their journey? And so very similar, triggered emails, editorial content that meets them along the path, you know, along where they are. So mm-hmm. are they in the planning process? Are they close to their shower? And then there's the guest. And so part of what we're hoping to gain in an exposure like this is reminding people that, We're here. We have the registry. Couples have selected us for really special product in their lives. And how do we talk more to the guest who may be invited to a wedding so that when they see multiple registries as an option, Mm -hmm. they're choosing Bloomingdale's too? That's such a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I— Kidding about uh, my shout outs to my uh, my nephew, but uh, <laughs> but it's true because I had a choice when faced with that, and we all know that greater awareness leads to greater trust, and mm-hmm. I'm going to opt for yep. the Bloomingdale's registry or what have you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a really great point. I also wanted to ask a really important question. What are your favorite reality shows? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Come on now. Oh, gosh. Dish. Well, I have to say, I watch a good amount of television, and I get to uh, use the excuse that it's research, which is lovely, (laughs) and I love doing that. There's nothing I like more. You can't write off your cable bill anymore, though. (laughs) (laughs) Not anymore. But I love, I love 
like coming home from a day and I and I decompress by clicking on the TV. I am a sucker for a competition show. I have to say, even though no. I've worked in ton of, I just love. Well, you the did stakes. some of that Bobby Flay work. Yes, yourself. I've done it. I've done a ton of them, and it's funny because I still love to watch them. <laughs> um, and sometimes after you, you drink work, your own Kool Aid, as do. they say. I huh? do. I do. I I I love them. I love the stakes. I love the intensity. <laughs> I just. I also love seeing like different artists, whether they be chefs, designers, painters, etc., in their element in that environment. It's just so cool. Love. I'm a sucker for a good competition yeah. show. All right. It's so funny. Over the weekend, uh, everyone as at a wedding. Actually, oh. I am attending <laughs> weddings all the time. I can't get it's out. wedding season. It is wedding season. <laughs> it is upon us. This is my third one in the past two wow. months. Yeah, but everyone was talking about naked and afraid. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but everyone was talking it's about. Good. So I would say I do have the guilty pleasure of the Keeping Up with the Kardashians. I think just because it has been going for so long, I feel like I grew up with it, these people. It does take a brave woman to admit that. I know. Oh, God, I, am, yes. I am confident. <laughs> I will say it. Um, judge me later. And then I— I am in that stage of life where I constantly want to redo my apartment. So HGTV, mm-hmm. you know, Chip and Joanna, that's like the other end of the spectrum of the yeah. Kardashians. But, you know, <laughs> I, I— But you need to balance it out. I, I, yeah, I feel like you just got to, like, cleanse your palate after that. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. good. That's good. Yes. All right. You're in the hot oh, seat, Nicole. Um, and you, know, you have to be truthful here. I, you know, I, I just really like thought about it. I know. <laughs> no, the, the floor is <laughs> It really <laughs> is. Uh, that was brave. Um <laughs> I've got to tell you, Shark Tank oh. is really, I don't know if that actually classifies sure. as yeah. that yeah. one. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, but I could a watch too it real for, some, it's yeah. a little too real. I could watch it for hours. You're and right. I imagine being a shark. Thanks. I imagine being one of the inventors. <laughs> it's just all so very exciting to me. Maybe a little close to home, but I really do. I love it. That's Although really Although I've funny. watched the I Do to the Venue video several, several, oh, several yes. times. <laughs> I, I can't have stop. Too. It, I mean, Maria and Trey are so just like wonderful people and you're so relating to them. Yes, yes. And um, this is not a spoiler alert because I'm not saying which one, but they ultimately did pick the venue where I was a bridesmaid. So, really? Yes, they did. Oh, my God. Yes. So I was having like little fun flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> Were you rooting for it as you watched? I was a little. <laughs> yeah, nice. that's remembering funny. that high-low dress I wore. Um, <laughs> what color? Pink. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. Well, there's reality shows. There's the reality of, of brands making their way into content. I just want to clarify one thing. So it sounds like we've had a happy ending. Everybody walked down the aisle beautifully. But I do want to come back to how did you create that marriage between the brands and the content, the creative that didn't get in your way of being creative? Sure, certainly. So once we came up with the concept and started reaching out to the brands, this was when Andy and Todd and Damon really got to work targeting brands that make sense in this wedding space. We would have meetings where we would just pitch a concept. And there was no, this hasn't, been done before with brands getting involved from the very, very beginning before there's a concrete show, before there's anything there other than a sheet of paper and an idea. And so it is a testament to the brands, and I want to say thank you, because it's a testament to the brands, the trust that they put into the storytelling process and to us to believe that we could execute on Mm -hmm. making a television show with organic integrations and not having it feel like a NASCAR. I also feel like the brands were so smart in understanding that we did want it to not feel in your face yep. and too forward. And it's I so think funny. I watched the sh- I've watched the show like three times now. It makes me and, so happy to hear. And <laughs> I literally couldn't tell you the like I saw the brands, but it felt so real to me. Mm-hmm. I would never have been like if somebody asked me who paid to be in that show, I would never have ever been able to say any brand mm-hmm. because when they're getting in them, mm-hmm. I, like. The Uber, for example. Mm-hmm. Like, we get an Ubers every day. Every day. And so seeing an I Uber— Exactly. <laughs> especially in New York City. I am in an Uber all the time with oh. my kids. You see that logo, and I agree with you to your point. If that had been stripped out, all of a sudden you're, like, reminded you're watching a show. Absolutely. Yeah. And not 
immersed in Maria and Trey's story and relating to it on a very emotional level. You see the Uber logo, you're like, yeah, I see that every day. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't walk down the street without seeing an Uber. And mm -hmm. so, like those kind of brand integrations, I feel like is is what millennials and Gen Zers are really open to because we're not trying to hide it. Mm -hmm. And and you don't feel like it's a NASCAR race. Exactly. And the brands were furthering the story. They weren't just yeah. talked, tacked on top of the story. They're furthering right. it. Lauren's expertise, the couple sitting down using the Knot app and scrolling through the Knot app, is something that couples actually do. And, and Lauren taking them from venue to venue, adding on trying to target the right venue for this couple when they are at a venue and they reach a standstill, Lauren's there to provide potential mm -hmm. solutions for compromise, right? Mm -hmm. It's adding this expertise that's furthering their journey and not detracting. The same thing with the registry. The registry was not a scene shot at the registry. It was a place we watched, we watch Marie and Trey shop the registry as we learn about their love story. That's where mm -hmm. we learn their whole background, how they met, how they fell in love, and start to learn the challenges that they're up against when finding the perfect venue. Obviously, couples don't always see eye to eye. So <laughs> that's where we learn about yeah. the conflict of the yeah. couple, which is the big thing that the story hangs on. So I think that's one thing we did really successfully is that the brands further the story mm -hmm. rather than are just just in, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. I have to say, you know, even along the the planning process or after we've, we did the initial shoot, Tori and the team would come back to Abby, my marketing manager and I, and say, you know, we're thinking about shooting this in 40 carats. Mm -hmm. And then we would be able to say, Oh, well, we send couples to 40 carats all the time That's to your, make decisions. So, yes, do that. Uh -huh. Yeah, It feels natural and it feels yep. organic. And we were really – we didn't want to feel like anything – any of Bloomingdale's part of this was forced or mm -hmm. wouldn't be something that any one of our couples didn't actually go through. Mm -hmm. so. so how many episodes are in the can? One. 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 Okay, so what happens after the launch next oh, week? Hopefully a lot more, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're excited to see how the show is received. Mm -hmm. Go back to the brands and talk about making more of them. And will you go back to these two brands? Or Absolutely. Are you guys locked and loaded for future episodes of this now? We're really excited. We're excited to see how the couples react to it. And we're helping a lot with getting the message out. We have a full marketing plan in place this week, getting people excited, sending out teasers, working with Bloomingdale's. We're so excited about a little premiere party, bringing in press and our couples into Bloomingdale's on Wednesday to watch the episode. So there's a lot that we're putting behind it as well because we mm -hmm. really want this show to be successful. And, and as I understand it, FYI will premiere this and then they'll probably extend it to their digital platform as well, mm -hmm. and then they'll see how some of the other a &E networks might take advantage of it as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so everything's on a, a wait and see, <laughs> just like any good relationship. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and we'll we'll look forward to waiting and seeing if, you know, branded content is the future way to go. Yes. Which oh. it seems like it is. I think it is. Yeah. Okay. Tori, Amanda, Nicole, thank you so much for joining me on Insider Insights. I'm E.B. Moss, and you've been listening to Insider Insights for Media Village. Check us out at mediavillage.com, and I hope that you'll subscribe to Insider Insights wherever you listen to podcasts.